Hello, hello, hello. This is V. Scott. We'll be taking a walk. We Well, we will be taking a walk today as I share three love letters that I wrote last year to three amazing women. My mom, my grandma, and my auntie. I've never met my auntie. She passed away before I was ever born, but the love letters will explain everything. Dear Ma, Words can never express how much I loved you and still do. You were not the greatest mom in the world, but you were the best mom for me. There was no book on how to deal with this very complex person I would become. But yet you knew how to deal with me in all my different moods. You loved me through the storm without me even knowing I was being loved through the storm. You had yourself and scars you didn't share with anyone at all. I understand all of that now. And it made you who you were in a lot of ways. Thank you for figuring out how to love me, even through your pain. I love you, even though you've been gone over 20 years. I was blessed God sent me to you because you love me through my pain and some of your pain no one ever knew about. You love me through pain that you never even knew about that I had. And I thank you for just loving me for, for me. I never got to tell you that. But thank you for loving me just because and no other reason. Thank you, but you already knew that I loved you because you got your flowers while you were here. I loved you while you were here. We spent a lot of days together. You know, I miss you and I love you. Always. Your daughter, Princess, is what you called me. Thank you. Love letter to my grandma. Dear grandma, you were on this earth for 90 years, but I feel like that still wasn't long enough for us. I know it was your time, and you were definitely right with God. You were as sweet as they came. And you blessed my children and I so with so much love. You had such a big heart and loved even harder. We love and miss you every day. I was blessed to have you as a grandmother. Our closeness became more like mother and daughter. It never diminished the love I had for my mom. You loved her just as much as I did. It was amazing the way you loved your daughter-in-laws and made them feel like your biological daughters. It was a blessing to be named after you and my auntie, Berta, who left this earth at age 10 way too early. I never met her. I feel like maybe I embodied her spirit. It was also a blessing to have my mother's middle name. I carried three very important women names. I love you, Grandma, and thank you for loving me and showing me what patience looked like, grace, humbleness, and truly loving God. I love you, my children, and all the family loves and miss you. So we thank you for just being the blessing that you were here on earth to us. Thank you, Grandma. We love you and miss you. And the love letter to my aunt that I never met, but I am named after her as well. Dear Auntie Verda May, though we've never met in this lifetime, I feel a strong connection to you and have never seen a picture of you. I was told so much as a child 
how much I looked like you. I feel like I embodied your spirit and became you. And that's the reason Grandma and I had such a strong connection because of you. The love I had from you and the love I had for you. Even though I don't know you and never met you, I love you and I am so honored to be named after you. I don't care if no one gets gets it or understand the connection I have with you or that I love an aunt I never even met, Aunt Verda. I wish we could have met, but it wasn't how God planned it, and I will not question God. I know you would have grown up to be a beautiful woman inside and out and definitely loved the Lord because Verda Lee was your mom. So that would have been inevitable. I love you. And since I have no idea of what you look like or would have looked like now, I drew this picture and it's you. Love your niece, Verda Lorraine. So I drew a picture of my auntie. I will place it after this um, after this video finish that um, I drew of my aunt. I may put pictures of my grandma, mom, and auntie. So, but what I want to say is, make sure you're loving the people while they're here. Make sure you are giving them their flowers while they're here. Flowers don't necessarily mean flowers. It means going to see them, spend time with them, and just loving on them. Because everybody don't want flowers. Everybody don't want flowers. You know, uh, with my mom, she has sickle cell anemia, so um, she would be in the hospital a lot of times. But I would go and see her in the hospital uh, sometimes, you know, because she had, you know, sickle cell is something that you um, have, you're born with it. So, you know, when I was a child, she definitely got sick. And so sometimes I may, I would have to go to family members' house to go to school and stuff like that. But um, when I got older... You know, because my aunts, when I would have to go with them, they would take me to see my mom. But when I got older and was able to get on the metro bus myself and go see my mom, I definitely did that. Uh, so it, that, that's just one of the things that um, I definitely went and did. And we, we spent time together. We did things together. And no, mom and I didn't always get along, but we loved each other. And she taught me a lot. She taught me a lot, so I am happy that I was blessed with such a mom because she allowed me to be myself and be who I was. You know, she let me get the little uh, brush and sing all <laughs> in the brush and just listen to music, you know. That's why I love music to this day is because of my mom. I am a lover of music, and we just had so much fun together listening to music and um and she just let me do me in a good way and so i i really appreciate i really appreciate that and then she would just let me go into my own little world of just writing or drawing and um but the one thing that i wish i had to share with her is how much of a passion i have for writing I really wish I would have shared that with her. I never really shared my true passion with her for writing. and um, But it's okay. It's okay. And with my grandma, oh, I adored my grandma. I absolutely adored this woman. I wrote a poem for my grandma that I will share later because I don't want to get too emotional. I ha I had to redo this one here at least three or four times. So I adored my grandma. She was just great. You know, she was wonderful. 
to me, to my children, and to so many others. Now, spending time with her, I would come. When I moved down here to North Carolina, I would come and visit my grandma and would just sit with her for hours upon hours, watching TV and talking. And that's what we would do, you know. And so I absolutely loved that woman. And she taught me some things as well. She taught me how to be humble. She taught me what patience looked like because I had none, you know. And I remember uh, it was a lady that came to her house and uh, she was talking about me to grandma. And so the lady came out and she was still talking junk. I was like, yeah, she said something. She was like, she said it to my grandma, whatever, whatever. And so I was like, grandma, why you let her um, talk about me? <laughs> why you let her talk about me? And she said, I, I didn't have to do nothing to her. She said, because she going to have to give account for that herself to God. So I didn't have to say anything. And I was like, okay, you know, okay. Um, I didn't understand it at the time, but eventually eventually I did understand it but I was like grandma could have took her up for me but so so it was like don't worry about what people say about you you don't have to worry about those things you don't have to worry about it because you don't have to involve yourself in the mess you don't have to do that because wow they are doing that God is already looking, you know, and he already knows all about everything. So don't worry about any of that. And you just make sure that you are doing the best that you know how to do. So I am grateful for her for teaching me a lesson when I didn't even realize that she was teaching me. You know, I miss her. I do. I, 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 mm. Whew. I said I wasn't going to do it. I said I wasn't going to do it. But I miss her. And I, I love her. And the connection that we had, it was, it was beyond grandma, granddaughter. I was here with her when, when grandma got sick. I was here. I was here living with her. I, I have the house now. But I was here living with her. And I was here when my grandma took her last breath. I was here in the house when they carried my grandma out of the house. But the love that you have for people, it never goes away. And the lessons, the beautiful lessons that you learn never goes away. And so I am grateful. This is my, this was my mom, my dad's mom. I never met my mom's mom. So, um, but I am so appreciative of the love that she had for my mom and the love that she had for for me and all my children and never never once judged me for having five children and I had four of them before I was ever married and she never judged me at all she never judged any of us like some Christians do my grandma taught me how to actually be decent to people no matter what no matter what I see my grandma let Jehovah Witnesses in the house and talk to them and I was like grandma what you let them in for she said uh, you let them in as to see what they have to say it's nothing wrong with it my grandma was a Christian okay she was a Christian that went to church faithfully and uh, she believed in God definitely but she treated all people equally and I haven't seen that a lot in a lot of Christians a lot of Christians turn their noses up at people because they aren't doing what they think that they should be doing and I just don't agree with that I am 
so happy that I was able to get these lessons from her that that I didn't know that I was getting. You know what I mean? Because it it opened me up to being open to so many other things and um, not being judgmental because I have been judgmental and I was judgmental and I had to look at myself about being judgmental of others and some people won't admit that they've been there but I have to tell the truth when I'm telling the truth and the truth is just the truth you know so before you know we decide to judge others let's look at ourselves first so that's what I had to do look at me you know look at me for being judgmental of anyone because that's not my place no matter what it's not my place so I am grateful for all three of these women. Even though I never met my aunt, I still feel like I embodied her spirit. I feel like she would have loved me, you know, and she would have loved the woman that I have become. And she would have helped me grow just like my grandma helped me grow. Because my grandma was such a loving woman. My mom was a loving woman woman as well so all three of these ladies I love them and always will and some people will never get that I love an aunt that I never met that passed away when she was 10 before I was ever even born or thought about but I love her and I always will I love my grandma forever and always and I love my mom forever and always I named my youngest daughter after my mom I was pregnant with my youngest daughter when my mom passed away my mom passed away June 16th June 16th it might have been June 17th 1996 I had my daughter July 4th 1996 I named her after my mom my mom's name was Petunia I named my youngest daughter Petunia after her grandma and I tried to make sure that my children still knew my mom through pictures, through me telling them about her, just the stories. My oldest daughter met my mom. She passed away. My oldest, oldest daughter was six. My middle daughter was three. So my middle daughter don't really remember her grandma. My oldest daughter have memories of her grandma. So, um... You know, but even with the stories that I tell them, so I feel like they know my mom because I wanted them to know her, you know, even though they didn't get to meet her. But, you know, through the pictures, through my stories, so they they know her. I feel like they know their grandma. And that was just so important to me for them to know my mom, their grandma. And um, they loved my grandma, which was their great grandma. But they didn't call her great-grand. They called her grandma, and she was just like a grandma to them. You know, she was grandma like she was grandma to me. And she was always loving and caring. And we need so much more of that in this world. We need more people that's loving out here, that's caring and genuine, that with no motives, because she didn't have any motives. Uh, she didn't want anything back from you. All she did was loved people. And if you wanted some prayer, <laughs> she was definitely someone that people came to to get prayed for because they would come over here and they would get prayer from Grandma because she was definitely a prayer warrior. Yes, she was. My grandma was a prayer warrior and she was a minister. My grandma was a Sunday school teacher for 20 years. For 20 years, she was a Sunday school teacher. And uh, I was in one of her classes um, when I was a little girl, when I came down for the summer before. And it was very interesting. I learned a lot, um, needless to say. And I knew I had to have uh, my stuff together because Grandma was the teacher. But the one thing that really stands out for me with Grandma for me is uh, when she taught me the Lord's Prayer. 
and uh, it was a part that I could I would always say it backwards and sometimes I still get it backwards and I was like I can't get it right grandma I can't get it right and she said it's okay baby as long as you are saying it thank you be blessed hello so I'm back I want to just go ahead and follow up uh, I know that I was ending it but I want to follow up so I wanted to speak to you all really quick about the reason I said my grandma was not judgmental about me. I know that a lot of people have had children while they weren't married. The reason I said she wasn't judgmental of me was because I had four children before marriage and not everyone had the same dad. So um, that's the reason I said she wasn't judgmental and neither was my mom. And I really don't think that my aunt would have been. And also, I was judged because I had a child when I was 17 and still in school. And uh, I had a really um, awful experience with a lady that said she was a Christian. She was a friend of my godmoms or her, her sister-in-law, whatever. And uh, basically, the lady uh, don't like my oldest daughter to this day because I had her when I was 17. And um, she had some really rude things to say to me that was very judgmental when I was 17 and pregnant. Um, so that was my experience. And so I'm just so thankful that I had a strong black woman in my life, my mom and my grandma, so strong black women, my mom and my grandma. And yes, my aunties as well back home, the Scots. Okay, I am happy that those ladies were in my life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mwah.